Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over the notes on DNA replication. So to start, DNA is found in the nucleus, right, of all every single cell in your body, okay? And your body is constantly making more cells through cell division, which will actually be our next unit. And if you're making more cells in your body, right, you're constantly growing, you are repairing, you're replacing cells, you know, especially in like your skin, for example. Um, if you're going to make more copies of your cells, you're going to have to make copies of your DNA as well. So that is what DNA replication is. It's, going, it's when you copy your DNA. And your body is actually very, very efficient at doing this. And it's quite amazing considering that when we're talking about DNA, this is a really, it's a big, it's a macromolecule. Um, there's billions, trillion, like there's just, I think it's billions. I want to say billions of bases inside of your DNA and just one cell in your body. And your body will make copies of all of those bases with pretty much no error, which is pretty impressive. All right, so the DNA replication is the process, like I said, which DNA is copied. And this is going to happen before a cell divides itself. It's going to make a copy of everything and then it will split in half and it splits up everything evenly. So each new DNA molecule is made up of one strand. So this is the important part. It's made up of one strand of the original and then one new strand. Okay, so what you do is remember DNA, it's a double helix. It's a twisted ladder. So let's untwist that ladder. You're going to take that original strand and imagine you split it in half. And then you're going to use that original strand as a template to create a strand that's complementary to it, okay, it complements a new strand, which is represented in red here, that complements it. So by the time you're done, this was your original strand, now you have two strands that are identical to it. And those two strands are made up of half of the original and then half of the, um, half of the new strand. Um, so since each of these strands is made up of an original and a new strand. We call this process semi-conservative, okay? Because you are using um, the original strand and pairing a new strand with it that you're gonna make. And so you have half old, half new, and that's why it's called semi-conservative. So here is the process if I, I mean, this is just me breaking it down into four simple steps. Um, if I had to break it down into steps, again, depending if you watch other videos or things like that, it might not always go exactly like talked about in this order, but this, this is the order in which I'm going to talk about things. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to unwind or unzip DNA. So you can see that here, the section of DNA, we've kind of split it in half. And that's used, and to do this, we use an enzyme called helicase. So helicase is an enzyme that unwinds or unzips the strand of DNA. And it does that by breaking the hydrogen bonds between the complementary nitrogen bases. So remember, A goes with T and C goes with G. So those nitrogen bases that are paired together, they're going to be separated from each other. Now, this is um, kind of happening continuously. It's like the DNA is unzipping, unwinding, and being copied. And then once it's copied, it's like closing back up. So in this case, um, replication in this diagram, it's happening in um, this direction, OK? 
okay, like the helicase is moving that way, unzipping it and then copying it. We'll get to that part in a second and then it will close back up. Now, this creates, once it opens up, it creates a replication fork, like literally a fork. So that's what it's called. Sometimes this is also called the origin as well because that's where we're, that's where replication is gonna be taking place. Now, to know where to start replication, um, we use an enzyme called primase. Okay, so this is kind of a general group of enzymes, and it's gonna add RNA primers. You can see that in the diagram here, the little orange guys. This is so DNA polymerase, which is the next enzyme we're gonna talk about. This is how it knows where to start the DNA replication process. Where are we gonna start making a copy of our DNA? So helicase has opened up our DNA strand to create the replication fork. And then although the enzyme is not shown here, the enzyme primase will add these RNA primers, which is where a replication will begin. So the main star, so to speak, of DNA replication is an enzyme called DNA polymerase. Remember the prefix poly means many. So this is going to build our new strands of DNA. This is what's building, if we go back up here, those strands that you see in red, bringing in all of these little pieces. Those are the nucle nucleotides, right? The monomer for uh, DNA. So we're gonna start building this new strand. We're starting at the RNA primer. And again, we're bringing in those uh, nucleotides. Remember, a nucleotide is made up of the sugar, which is deoxyribose, the phosphate group, and then one of those nitrogen bases. And we're making sure that we're pairing the nitrogen bases correctly with each other. Now, something that is unique about um, this process is it has to be built in a specific direction. Now, DNA, let me just do a little simple diagram over here. There's a five prime end and a three prime end. And they run what we call anti-parallel to each other. So here's like a strand of DNA, five prime and three prime ends. The five prime end is always on the end that has the phosphate on it. Now, when we unzip this strand of DNA and we're making a new strand, now you're creating new five prime and three prime ends, okay? So if I was to separate this strand of DNA, this would be the five prime, three prime, um, three prime, five prime, okay? Now, if you're making a new strand of DNA that's going to complement this, well, now you're gonna have a new three prime and five prime ends, okay? However, when you're building these, they have to be built in a specific direction. So one strand is going to be built continuously. So the strand built in the direction helicase is moving is what we call the leading strand because it is built continuously. Okay, so you can see here replication is going this way. The helicase is moving that way. And the leading strand can be built. Here's our new five prime N, okay? So that means on this original strand of DNA, um, this must have been the other five prime, three prime N on this strand. And then here's the three prime N on the new strand that's being built. So it's always built going in the five prime to three prime direction. So five prime, to three prime. So this strand is built continuously going in the same direction. However, the other strand, um, the other strand is built going, because it has to be built in a specific direction. Um, it's actually it has to be built going this way because this is the five prime end and the three prime end. So this means on the original strand, this was the three prime, um, this was the uh, three prime n over here, okay, on the original strand. So this has to be built going this way, but everything's moving in this direction. So 
This strand is built discontinuously. And this is what we call the lagging strand. And this creates, this is named after the person who cre uh, discovered this. Um, this creates Okazaki fragments. Okay, so we, it's kind of like, we're, although everything's moving in this direction, it's like, we'll build a little piece and then we got to run over here, build a little piece going this way, run to catch up, build a little piece, because we have to build going in this direction, but everything is moving in this direction. So that's what we call the lagging strand. Um, DNA polymerase, not only is it building a new strand of DNA, but it also proofreads as it goes to make sure that things are being paired correctly together. There are some other enzymes though that will also double check to make sure everything is um, paired correctly. And if not, DNA polymerase can go back in and kind of swap out bases to make sure things are paired correctly together. Now, remember the lagging strand is built in pieces. They're called Okazaki fragments. Um, those have to be sealed together. So the enzyme that seals everything together is called ligase. And you can see that here. It's going to pretty much seal together all of these gaps that we're seeing in the uh, lagging strand. Now... Like I said, DNA polymerase will proofread. However, um, sometimes mistakes happen and they are not always caught and fixed by that DNA polymerase and or other enzymes. And this can lead to a mutation or multiple mutations. And again, a mutation is when, um, if we have a change in the DNA sequence, then that gene that codes for that protein, it's going to ultimately change the uh, end result uh, or the protein. Remember, um, DNA, its purpose is to code for how to make proteins in our body. So if we make an error during replication and then that DNA is used to make a protein, well, if the DNA is messed up, then the protein will be messed up potentially. Now, DNA replication is usually very accurate. Um, it only makes, it's very few mistakes, maybe every few thousand. And most of the time, these mutations, um, they don't really have any effect on the end result or um, it doesn't really affect the end result of a protein. It's only when um, these mutations accumulate over time um, especially in old age, that maybe we can start to see problems such as cancer. Um, cancer is when very specific sections of the DNA are affected. The sections of DNA that code for, uh, the, or code for proteins and stuff that control the cell cycle, which is um, how fast cells divide and things like that. Um, so again, this can happen. Mutations can just naturally happen. However, there are things that can increase the likelihood of mutations happening, such as exposure to UV light. That's why um, wearing sunscreen is really important because UV light, um, it can penetrate your skin. And if it does um, get to the DNA in your skin, um, skin cells and messes that up enough, that could lead to skin cancer. Radiation, of course, this is probably what most likely killed Rosalind Franklin, and um, certain chemicals and or other environmental factors can lead to mutations, which we will um, talk a little bit more about later on. And if you are interested, I will post, um, let me find the article, let me find the article for that, here we go. Um, I'll post this if you're interested. Um, it's just about mutations. Your body acquires trillions of new mutations every single day um, because think about how often your cells are dividing and how many um, bases we're talking about here. So I'll post this article. But um, again, there's a lot of mutations that happen. Um, as this one uh, doctor says, it sounds very scary. She's a cancer researcher. Fortunately for us, I'm sorry, uh, he's a 
cancer researcher, um, doesn't really have a major effect.